Okay, so first consideration when you're a new gardener and you want to grow vegetables is where are you? Where are you in the country? Um, what is your climate? So what is your hardiness zone? And the hardiness zone is something that is um, published by the USDA. And I actually have a map. This is really common. This is printed in the back of Elliot Coleman's book, but um, of course it's backwards looking at it from a, the selfie view on the camera. Basically it's a colorful map and it gives you your hardiness zone. There's another map. I don't have a copy of it right in my home library, but um, you can real easily pull this up on Google uh, or any other search engine and search um, frost-free days for wherever you are. So get that map up and then look at where you are on that map and look at the number of frost-free days. So those two things are related. The hardiness zone is the minimum low temperature in the winter time. So um, that relates more and is more important, uh, things like fruit trees um, and what they can handle for that minimum low temperature. Uh, with respect to the other map, the frost-free days, that becomes really important um, in choosing what you're going to grow. So I live in Maine and I live right on the coast. So I am zone five or zone six in that range. And most of our customers fall in between zone four and zone seven. So I'm kind of in the middle. Um, one of the things, I guess I'll use tomatoes as an example if you're a new gardener, right? Everybody wants to grow tomatoes, not the proverbial tomato. I'm talking actual tomatoes. So there's something on every seed packet um, called days to maturity. And so you wanna know what your frost-free days are because when you go and you look at seeds, you wanna look at your days to maturity. So when you're looking at tomatoes, and this happens to be a Johnny's Seeds catalog, but it doesn't matter what this applies to anyone. See these little varieties down here, these are gonna have a shorter day to maturity than one of these big beefsteak style large tomatoes. So what's gonna happen if, for example, you don't have a greenhouse and you're growing outside and, oh man, those look amazing, right? You wanna slice those up and put them on a sandwich or do whatever you do with wonderful big tomatoes like that. The problem will be if you try to grow these outside, for example, in zone five, you'll get lots of big tomatoes, but they'll all be green. They won't um, ripen in time before you get that frost in, in September. So you wanna make sure you pay attention to your frost-free days and your days to maturity. Um, the other thing on the flip side is if you're in, let's say zone seven or eight, you're at the other end of the spectrum, or further south, uh, and you want to grow peas. Well, peas like cold or cool weather. So you would never want to plant peas in July, for example. There might be enough days, frost-free days there, but that's not appropriate for your climate. So um, I guess a third example of a crop that I love, which is sweet potatoes, and I've tried and tried and tried to do all kinds of season extension and, um, everything that I can possibly do to be able to grow sweet potatoes here and it just doesn't work for my climate. So I finally gave up, um, but I tried really hard. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'd like everybody to have success with that. We're gonna do the next video. Um, we'll be a little bit more in detail on like direct seeding and what to seed when and transplants um, and maybe make a list of what seeds and, and materials you need when you go to the garden center because there's lots of people that like our customers that we supply are doing um, curbside pickup, but you would need to know what to ask for when you call that order in. So we'll go over that in the next video.